Welcome back to a new video about the magnetic circuits and this is our example number three. In this example we'll discuss a more practical situation where we see also electromagnet which will then has a connection with the sheet. So let's look at the problem. So the problem is given we have again a magnetic system which consists in this case of a laminated core and a single sheet of iron. The laminated core is shown here, that's the core and the sheet is here, which is not laminated. Now, the lamination has, of course, effect, which will be discussed shortly. The core here is actually electromagnet because there is a coil around it and also the current is flowing through it. And it is due to that lamination, it has a stacking factor of 0 0.9. And it will be clarified also when we work out the calculations. The thickness of the core and also the sheet in this system is 70 millimeters. So it is a depth of 70 millimeters. The mean path length of the core, which is also shown in the figure, is 140 millimeters, which is of course required to calculate the flux, for example. And the mean path length of the sheet here is 80 millimeters. The air gap in this case has a length of 2 millimeters. Okay, the number of turns in this coil is 30. That's also the information given. In addition, we have another uh, information here, which is the relationship between the magnetic field intensity and also the magnetic flux in density. So the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity has a relationship which is given by this formula. And we will use this, and this is then valid in the core and also in the sheet. Remember, it is not valid in the air so it is in vacuum air not valid just in the core and also in the sheet so the question or what we need to calculate is the following calculate the required current i we need to here inject to establish a magnetic flux density in the sheet of 2.5 tesla in the center of the sheet so in this center we need to have 2.5 tesla in the sheet and also required current for that is now the question in place. So how do we start? Now let's look at the solutions. Of course we need to work towards the current so we need a, a relationship or an equation which has that current in it. So let's look at the first equation what we can use. So the current is given by this expression in this magnetic system. So again our MMF, magnetomotive force, and also the turns ratio, the number of turns and also the current. But in this case, we also don't know the current and also we don't know what the MMF is. So we are again stuck with this formula. So let's look to a more, um, more information about MMF also. The MMF is also given by this formula, which is very handy in this case. So now we have the length and also the magnetic field intensity. And that's also the MMF. So we can now combine these two formulas we can say this f is equal to that f, just equal to each other. So we can say n times i is equal to h times the length of our path. And this will be clarified shortly. So in this case, again, the number of turns here in our coil, the current is i, h is the magnetic field intensity, and also we have the f, which is then the magnetomotive force. Okay, so how do we continue in this case? Now, let's first draw our electric equivalent circuit for this. Now, this coil and also with that current in it will generate, of course, a source, which is then a magnetic source here, which is then MMF. This path, which is then just the core path, will have a reluctance, which then here represented by resistance in the electric domain. This gap, and also in this gap, will have its own reluctances, so resistance on the left side and also on the right side. And this sheet will have also its own reluctance, so we have actually four reluctances in series. And of course, we have again our magnetic flux, which is then circulating in this case with four reluctances in series, and this is the source. This will be handled later on because now we can work out this equation in great detail. We can say n times i, which is then the left side of this equation, is actually a summation of each part of these reluctances. 
how do we work this out? Now we have, of course, the sheet and its associated length. So we have the magnetic field intensity times the, the mean path length. This is actually working out Ampere's law. And we have two times the magnetic field intensity of the two gaps and also the length of those gaps. And finally, we have also the core. So we have the magnetic field intensity associated with the core and also the mean path length of that core. So we need to work out this one. So once we know these elements, and of course the N is given already, we can just calculate I. That's actually our uh, way to work it out. So let's then look to the magnetic field intensities which is then given by these three values of H. Now, first one, the sheet. We know it's, it's already given that the sheet magnetic flux density is given already in the formula. So we can, in, in the information in the question, so we can just use this formula and then work out what then the associated magnetic field intensity will be. That's just substitute the 2.5 Tesla, you will get 3,713 amperes turn per meter so that's done so we have already this one and this is just what we already have in the sheet which is then 0.08 meters okay let's continue with the next one which is the core now again we can use the formula the core and also associated magnetic flux density in the formula but the problem is we don't know what the magnetic flux density is for the core so that is an unknown here so we are actually st stuck with this equation at the moment or the formula now let's also look at the gap because that's the third one and that has this value of course this expression because we cannot use this formula for the gap that's only valid for the core and also the sheet this is the expression we also have the permeability of vacuum because we are working in air we assume that the vacuum and air are exactly equal to each other but this is then again what we require so we again require the magnetic flux density again we're stuck because we don't know the magnetic flux density so we need to also have a relationship between a magnetic flux density in other formula and that is the magnetic flux so let's move to the magnetic flux because magnetic flux is actually circulating around here in this circuit and it's in for all four cases the same so once we know this this will give us a lot of information and we can work out also the unknowns here so the flux magnetic flux and we of course use the information from the sheet is equal to the magnetic flux density of the sheet times its area or the cross-sectional area. Now we know the cross-sectional area of our sheet and we also know the magnetic flux density from the question. So we can now work it out 2.5 times 0 0.07 which is the depth or the thickness of the sheet and also this is then the thickness of this sheet here. So that is the cross-sectional area times 2.5 you have this flux magnetic flux here so 7.8.75 times 10 to the power minus 5 weavers this is now also valid here and also for the gaps so that is in this series combination exactly equal to each other so that is already a nice result and we can continue with the magnetic flux densities for the core and the gap okay the first one which is in the core what is that just using a formula which for the core is equal to the phi divided by the core cross-section area. And in this case, we need to remember that there is a stacking factor here. So it is not one, it is 0 0.9. So that means that must be multiplied by the cross-section area such that we have the effective cross-section area of that part of the magnetic circuit. So if you now work this out, just substitute the value here and also the cross-section area, this is then 0 0.07 times 0 0.02, that's actually this 0 0.02 times 0 0.07 for the depth or the thickness. And then also the stacking factor to make sure that this is the laminated core is then effectively calculated. Then you have this value for our magnetic flux density for our core. So 0 0.0694 Teslas for the magnetic flux density in the core. Now, in the gap, we can also work it out in a similar form. We have, of course, again, our phi and divided by the gap cross-section area. Now we have another issue because the gap here will 
cause some fringing and that will be also need to be taken into account and what we do for that is to make it more accurate and also uh, the approximation is then following you use again the cross-sectional area here like we did actually for this so I will show you what the result is so you again have your phi but you divide by the 0.07 plus actually the length or the thickness actually here or the length of the gap it's much is better to say that so the the 0.07 that's the thickness of this uh, part of the gap that must be added to the length of the gap so you need to add the length to the each dimension here so that's actually also done here and that is more accurate result than just ignoring the length of this gap and then also ignoring the fringing effect so you can do that but it will give you less accurate results now if i now work this out also you will get 0 0.0552 tesla so that is then the magnetic uh, flux density for the gap now we have now necessary information here and here then we can calculate using the formula here and, the, and here so what we have just substitute the values you will have this here and that will give you 0 0.8 eight six seven ampere turns per meter that's for the core now also for the gap you just substitute the values this for the vacuum the permeability vacuum this is just a constant so you can you can look it up in the table this is what we have calculated now for our magnetic flux density divided by the mu zero will give you this large number you can see already here which is actually which will contribute the most actually for our uh, equation here okay we have now there's necessary values to work out this equation so then we have the following let's repeat what we have this is what we have here just repetition and then substitute the values we have so we have the turns number of turns which was 30 in this case this is here so it is then h of s which is for the sheet times the mean path of the sheet which is in 0 0.08 80 millimeters two times the part of the gap and this is the part of the gap and also times its length so this is just 0 0.002 so two millimeters and plus the associated part for the core and that was actually the final one this one times the mean path length of the core now this is the worked out form so if i now simplify the right and right hand side of this equation i will get 472.9 that's then 30 times our current so if you work out a current you will get 15.8 amperes approximately 16 amperes we require in order to have in this sheet in the center of the sheet a magnetic flux density of 2.5 teslas so in this case the uh, procedure was different than example number two because we don't have any information about the relative permeability of the core we don't know anything about it so you can also try to use the phi formula where you also have the reluctances but you get stuck because you don't know anything about the magnetic uh, uh, material of this system so you don't know the core relative permeability so this is actually the way to work out this exercise in this case given the information in this exercise all right this was for example number three and we have now worked out the necessary uh, current value for this problem if you have any questions again please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible the next question the next problem example example number four will be a more practical problem where we also will lift this sheet up so stay tuned and see you next time take care